When I was four years old, my mother came to collect me from school one day, only to find I was distraught. She asked me what on earth happened, and I explained how that day at school, I had been playing kiss chasing with the boys, but none of the boys would kiss me. And that was a problem, because if none of the boys would kiss me, well, then I'd never have a boyfriend. And if I never had a boyfriend, I would never get married. And if I never got married, I would never have children. I know, as an unusual four-year-old. <laughs> My mother was horrified, as she thought this meant I'd be pregnant by the time I was 14. But luckily, I was more interested in sports than boys. But this incident did provide a clue as to my future career, because for the last 14 years, it has been my privilege to support those who are struggling to conceive or who have experienced recurrent miscarriage. Now, if you've never experienced fertility issues before, you'd be forgiven for thinking, what fertility problem? Isn't the world overpopulated enough as it is? But much like climate change, just because you can't see the signs doesn't mean it's not there. So I'd ask you all to pause for a moment and think of somebody you know personally who's either going through or who has survived breast cancer. You might know two or three, maybe more. The incidence of breast cancer worldwide for women in their lifetime is one in nine. By contrast, the incidence of fertility issues for men as well as women is one in six. That's one in six. So odds are very high that somebody you care deeply about is going through this right now. So I could talk to you about how you can improve your egg quality, which you can, or about how sperm quality is massively on the decline, which it unfortunately is. But I want to go a step further than that and get to the core of where I believe fertility issues truly arise. And it's not what you might think. Sure, diet, lifestyle, environment, they all have their part to play, but that's not where the issue really begins. Because the issue begins in our youth, well before you've even contemplated having children, unless you're anything like me. Begins with what we are taught, or in this case, not taught, about our fertility. For you see, we're taught that fertility and conceiving a baby is the most natural thing in the world. And as teenagers, we tell our young women, whatever you do, don't get pregnant. We tell our young men, don't you dare get her pregnant. <laughs> our fertility is essentially a foregone conclusion, a guarantee, in fact. So when we grow up, and for those of us who choose to become parents, if they struggle to conceive, the implied message to them is that they are broken. Around the world and across many different cultures, those who struggle to conceive are often shunned, maligned, and ostracized, as if it were a personal failure on their part. Why all this taboo around fertility? Is it because it reminds us of our own mortality? For the way we live on as humans is through those who come after us. In a society where we shy away from death, are we inadvertently shaming those who live through it? A miscarriage is a death. The only difference is that it's the death of a person none of us will get the chance to meet. There is no funeral and no public acknowledgement of the parents' grief and loss. With regards to fertility, some might say, the young, they're just too young to listen. The old, they're too old to care. But I disagree with that. I believe that we all care. And we should remember, small acts of kindness and compassion carry more weight for those who are struggling than can be put into words. When it comes to life-saving and life-changing technologies, we embrace them with open arms. But what about those technologies that are used to help us create life? We welcome genetic testing to learn more about our heritage. But when it comes to genetic testing of an embryo, you will still see raised eyebrows. We actively seek out any medical advances that can help us to save lives, improve our quality of life, and increase longevity. 
So why should fertility treatment be any different? Who are we to say how or when a person should conceive? There was a time not so long ago when we used to die in our 40s. Now we fully expect to live into our 80s and beyond. So women shouldn't feel ashamed for wanting to conceive over 40. And men shouldn't have to suffer in silence with their fertility issues because they fear being perceived as less manly. And for those who opt for egg or sperm donation or surrogacy, they shouldn't be criticized for doing something outside of the box. For you see, if you would accept a kidney donation to save your life, how is that any different from a woman offering the use of her uterus to help others create a life? A while back, I was chatting to my brother in the kitchen. And for whatever reason, the conversation turned to the topic of transgender. We spoke about it for a few minutes before my 11-year-old daughter, who I'd forgotten was in the room, interjected. And her comments were so insightful, matter-of-fact and empathetic, that it left my brother and I speechless. Because she said, Mommy, aren't they just people trying to figure out who they are? Isn't that what we all do, try to figure out who we want to be when we're older? In that moment, I realized just how much things have changed. Because when I was my daughter's age, more than 25 years ago, the word gay was used as an insult in the schoolyard. And here was my daughter shattering that. I felt so much pride towards her, but mo most of all, I felt so much hope for the future and what the next generation might be taught about their fertility. We all have hidden struggles. But the real issue is our fear of judgment. Judgments that are based on preconceived, stale ideas. So here is my idea worth sharing. I believe that fertility should be taught in our schools and universities. And yes, we need to bring this conversation into the workplace. And that conversation starts right here on this red dot. I want this red dot to symbolize a full stop to the ignorance and misunderstanding that still surrounds fertility. And in particular, a full stop to those thoughtless comments that still abound. Oh, you're 35. Time's a ticking. <laughs> Shouldn't you start trying for a baby? Or, oh, you had a miscarriage. Never mind, just keep trying. One will stick. Change is never easy. But once it's here, we can't imagine things being any other way. Much like my daughter's inspiring attitude to those struggling with gender identity issues, so too we need to examine our own attitudes and beliefs towards fertility. Because after all, none of us would be here without it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>